been raining all morning, so today is the perfect day to get some homemade granola started. I'm gonna start with about three and a half cups of rolled oats. Okay, so there's my oats. I'm gonna keep the base of my oats pretty simple because I'm gonna add in lemon and blueberry at the end. And then I'm also gonna add in about a tablespoon of molasses. And this is something I haven't done before, but I'm gonna try it because I'm trying to get this granola to taste like one of my favorite granola brands without having to buy it. I just wanna learn how to make it homemade. To give it a little more depth. Avocado oil. You could also use coconut oil, but I much prefer the flavor of avocado because it's just neutral. And then I'm also gonna do in that same measuring spoon so it's not super sticky. I'm just gonna do a little raw honey. And it should come out really easily. I love doing that. Next, just to balance out those sweet flavors, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of salt. And I also am gonna add in about two tablespoons of lemon zest and two tablespoons of lemon juice into my oat mixture. And that's just gonna give it a really nice lemony flavor that is gonna go well with the dried blueberries that I'm gonna put in at the end. put this on a parchment lined baking sheet and I'm gonna bake it low at about 325 for about 25 minutes. You don't wanna let it get too brown, but you do wanna make sure that it will crisp up as it sits. So just make sure you get that sugar nice and caramelized and the honey that's on it so that it has a nice texture in the end. Now I'm gonna get started on my granola bars. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some good quality butter into the pan and we're gonna start by melting our sugar in our butter. Most granola recipes are gonna call for brown sugar, but I'm gonna use my raw sugar and the molasses again and that kind of makes a version of brown sugar. It just kind of like spruces up the regular sugar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in about a third of a cup of raw sugar along with just about half a tablespoon of molasses. And then, of course, because granola is really just sweetened oats, I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup of the raw honey and this will just make those oats nice and sticky. And if you're interested in the actual recipes I'm using today, I'll just leave them down below in the description box. And then I'm also gonna leave for you guys a link where you can use my shopping list that I've created for you guys so that your groceries are kind of taken care of for the week and you can make some of these yummy recipes for your family. For the granola bars, I think I'm gonna add in some of the dried cherries I picked up last week. We just have a few left. So I'm just gonna take these, I'm gonna chop them up and then we'll add that into the bar mixture and it'll just give it a little bit of like chewiness and kind of balance out all the flavors. And you can really substitute anything for the dried cherries. You could use dried blueberries or little mini chocolate chips, whatever you want to use here. Raisins would even be delicious. You can add those in as just a little mix-in. And I also wanted to point out that I'm using two different oats today. So I'm using the sprouted quick oats for the granola bars, and then I'm using the old fashioned rolled oats for the granola. So you wanna make sure you're using the right kind of oats to make whatever type of granola or granola bar that you're using. And then something that makes granola just stand out to me is adding in brown rice crisps. And this just adds the most amazing flavor and texture. I noticed that this was a common ingredient in all of my favorite granolas and bars. So if you haven't tried adding that yet, you can get them off Amazon or at like a health food store like Sprouts and they just add such a great little crunch to it and it makes a world of a difference. Okay and back into the oven. 
So now for the granola bars, I'm just taking some parchment and I'm rubbing it with a little bit of avocado oil and that's just gonna help those bars not stick to the parchment when we go to pull them off. And then I'm just heating up that butter and sugar mixture that's all melted together now and I add it in just a little dash of almond extract, which is totally optional. You could do almond, you could do vanilla extract, but it just adds a nice little flavor. And I did that and then just tossed that all together. And that's really a simple, simple snack that you can keep in the house all the time for your kids. So if that's something you usually keep in the house from the grocery store, try making it yourself because it's so easy and the ingredients are so much better for you. You can control everything that's in there. You can adapt it to your taste. So you could use honey or maple syrup or just regular brown sugar if you have really picky kids. I love that you can switch out the fruits. You could add nuts. You could add chocolate chips. It's just a great staple and I plan on making these all the time. My kids just love them. So you just wanna let your granola bars cool in the fridge for about an hour. And then after that, you can cut them into rectangles or squares or whatever you wanna do. And your bars are ready to go. And I just like to store them in an airtight container in the fridge and they'll keep for at least a week, but usually ours are gone within just a day or two. It's been a really rainy and wet week, which means that we've spent more time in the house this week and I needed a way to kind of keep my kids entertained just using some simple things around the house. So in between the rain, me and the kids went over to my mom's house who has a couple acres and we picked some dandelions and so we're gonna make a dandelion Play-Doh. And this is just a fun activity for your kids and it's really easy to make. So all I did was I took some of the dandelions that we picked and I just put some boiling water on top and just kind of let it steep almost like a dandelion tea and then we went in and just made a normal play-doh recipe so i used sea salt and avocado oil which you could use any oil i just only had this one so i was going to use that instead of olive oil but i used that cream of tartar and then just a really plain all-purpose flour just store brand and we just mix that all together and then we add in a dandelion puree and it just makes a beautiful play-doh that's interesting and fun to play with and just a little different than your average play-doh and so it keeps them entertained for hours hours on end, which is perfect for the rainy and cozy summer days. The next day is kind of a late breakfast. I decided I was gonna make a Vidalia onion pie, but I was gonna add some of my patapan squash that I picked up last week at the farmer's market. And so this morning I just started by getting my sweet Vidalia onions. They're in season right now. And so I'm cutting those up into thick slices and I'm gonna cook those down with my patapan squash and just a little bit of oil.
So typically when I make a Vidalia onion pie, I'll just do the Vidalia onions, but today I'm gonna use some of these pad pan squash, kind of cut them in half, and I'm gonna leave the seeds in, and just kind of take this core out, and you can do this with regular summer squash or even zucchini squash. Pretty much any squash would work in this, or you can just do just the Vidalia onion. I think I'm just gonna mimic the shape of the onion and just make little slices. And I'm gonna get this going in a skillet with a little bit of butter and some salt and pepper and start to soften these before we put together the pie. And in the meantime, while those are sauteing and softening up, I'm gonna get started on my einkorn pie crust. So my favorite way to make a pie crust is in a food processor. So all I'll do is I'll take some of my einkorn flour and I'll put that in along with some really cold butter and some cold water and a pinch of salt. And then I just pulse that together and that is basically it. And then you can just roll it out. You can put it in the fridge and let it get nice and cold and make sure that that pie crust is gonna be really flaky from the butter. And then it's as simple as that. And sometimes if I'm making a sweeter pie, I'll add in just a pinch of sugar just to give it that extra sweetness that you look for in a pie crust for a baked good but since this is more of a quiche more of a, a breakfast pie I'm just gonna leave it with just the salt so it'll be salty and buttery and that is all we need So to make the custard filling for this pie, all I'm gonna do is take some of my sharp white cheddar cheese and I'm gonna grate that and then I'm gonna combine that with the last of this week's raw milk, a little bit of onion powder, salt and pepper, and eggs. And I'm just gonna mix that all together and we're gonna pour that over the cooled squash and onion mixture and then we're gonna put it all inside of our pie crust. I also like to save just a few pieces of the pad pan squash and onions to top it with because it just makes it look really pretty, but this is totally optional, but I love the color and the fact that you can show the squash in it. I just think it looks really special.
Tonight for dinner, I'm going to be making a really rustic cabbage and egg noodle dish. And so I'm going to spend some time this afternoon making some homemade einkorn egg noodles. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with some flour and some egg yolks and salt. And I'm just going to mix this dough together and then I'm going to roll it out. So making homemade pasta sounds really tricky and hard, but it's actually super simple. And I'm not using any kitchen tools today to do it. I'm just using my hands and rolling pin. And it doesn't take long at all to do. And it's very, very good, especially especially in a dish like this, which doesn't have a ton of ingredients. It's very simple and wholesome, and it's a rustic dish. My husband is from Pittsburgh, and they call it halushki up there, which I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but that's what we're going to call it. And it's a really simple dish that just is all about the ingredients you're using. So I love making the homemade noodles, but you could definitely just use a nice egg noodle from the store and good butter, a nice fresh cabbage and you're still gonna have a really hearty delicious meal so I'm just taking that einkorn egg noodle dough and I'm rolling it out and I actually decided to put some minced garlic in it to give those noodles even more flavor so it's kind of like a garlic egg noodle which I thought was really fun to make I love how you can even see the little chunks of garlic in it So since the noodles were fresh, I just boiled them for just two or three minutes in some boiling salted water and those were ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the cabbage for dinner tonight. I'm using this beautiful cone-shaped cabbage that I picked up and I'm gonna go ahead and take the leaves off and thinly slice it and then we're gonna have that cooked down with some garlic and some onion and a skillet with a little bit of oil and then at the end we'll finish it off with some butter and this is just such a simple thing and you could buy this cabbage it's super inexpensive and it just feeds an army it's such a hearty vegetable I love that I love cooking in the summertime. I feel like it's the one time of year when everyone really appreciates the food that's growing, whether it's just a simple cabbage, whether it's a watermelon. And I think it makes cooking just so much easier when you just use fresh in-season ingredients. You don't have to make really complicated meals. You don't have to have super long recipes. You can just cook and you know that every meal is gonna turn out delicious. Thanks so much for joining me on this cozy summer week in my kitchen, and I hope you guys try out some of these recipes. I'll have it linked down below, and I'll see you in the next video.